Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf your one and only. Playing some more Dragon Blaze. We'll actually go over the patch notes that are apparently still not decided to notice right now. So I have to go to the forum. But uh, first things first, we probably won't be using Dragon Blaze music again. Because <laughs> I did receive a claim for the music and that. So yeah, probably just going to start back using my own music again. So yeah let's go ahead and throw this up on the screen and get to it so we have el gravis which is pretty much our encanter everybody's been looking forward to i know i have too because she's probably going to be like really really freaking good last i remember of her skills all right so encanter physical damage and dps and decreases people's attack speed so this is I want to say the first time we're getting um, a physical attacker because I don't think we've had a physical attacker for like encanters. I guess I said that weirdly. I, I think this is the first time we're getting the physical encanter. Let's say that. So I'm actually looking forward to it because yeah, doing a physical team right now. But let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Now you guys can get a pretty good close-up. Alright, first skill. Removes all buffs from one enemy. Inflicts damage equal to the 40% of the enemy's max HP on non-boss types enemy. Okay. So if the enemy's not a boss type, it doesn't do that. Alright, inflicts damage on boss type enemies. Oh. That's, that's just all it does versus non-boss enemies. Eh, all right then. Well, boss enemies normally, well, the actual like um, war bosses and stuff don't actually have like a max HP or anything. So I can see why it does this instead. So yeah. Anywho, increases the blood contract gauge for 15. The maximum is 100. Increases physical damage received by hit enemies. Wait. Increases physical damage received by hit enemies. So if I hit the enemies in... Okay, I, I think it's us hitting the enemies, not uh, hitting us. It is, like I said, Dragon Blaze patch notes are worded kind of weirdly, but eh, it happens. This effect is stacks up to two times. Okay, nice, nice. Second skill. Wait, what am I doing? Didn't I say I was going to read it off of... Um... I, I could have sworn that I said I was going to read it off wiki for now on. Just to give you guys the basics of the skills. Because I'm pretty sure they explained it better. Alright, it still does the same thing. But alright. Second skill. Removes all beneficial effects from the enemy and deals damage for 24 seconds. Enemies hit will receive additional range damage. Okay. And increase physical damage and reduce accuracy. Ooh. Does not work on boss types. Okay. And this skill cannot be, oh, in effect cannot be canceled. That is perfect. Third skill. Remove one beneficial effect. Wait, this removes all, right? Okay, no. I said remove all, I think. So remove one beneficial. My bad. Remove one beneficial effect from the enemy and deals damage. For 12 seconds, enemies will receive 30% of their power every time they attack. But does not work on boss types. Also increase allies' physical attack power attack power during the duration nice so a good buffer so far all right passives i'm not gonna go into affinity or any of this just because they're not with us right now but i'll talk about that if they are Hold up. actually i should be looking through the rest of this before because we never know if we can get... Oh, Ultimate Enhancer are going to be added. So I can go into Ultimates. 
Oh, they even talk about the ultimates in there. Alright, I'll go into ultimates. Alright, first passive summons an untouchable blade or untargetable blade upon entering. Okay. So I guess it's only untouchable when it comes into the field and it disappears, but then again, it doesn't tell us how long it's untouchable. So I'm guessing the sword is guaranteed untouchable. All right, second passive. When the blood pledge gauge hits 100, the gauge is consumed for eight seconds. The blood gauge splits into five swords, which randomly hit all enemies, remove all beneficial buffs, and causing damage while channeling every time an enemy is hit gain a beneficial buff that increases your attack by 10% your attack speed by 5% and your boss damage by 30% this stacks up to 20 times so I'm guessing you would want to put her in either a speed build or probably something else along that line this beneficial effect is held for 24 seconds and cannot be cancelled okay so even if somebody was to have a channeling breaking zeal it can't be counted is what I'm pretty much trying to hear here <laughs> I hope so for every additional enhancement further increase the stacking damage by 20% per additional enhancement okay Jesus Christ is also immune to condition effects and receive 80% less damage while channeling with blood pledge oh wow okay so just that she's pretty much like a slow building DPS as well as a buffer but it doesn't say that her allies get these buffs it's only her because the more longer she keeps going the faster it goes nice all right so third passive when a blood sword crits it randomly seals one of the enemy's active skills for seven seconds except boss types also reduces that enemy's attack speed by 50 percent jesus so sounds good in pvp for sure pve versus bosses and not so much but she's still a really good buffer so she could still be useful all right so let's get into the max passive let's get into the max passive during blood island oh, oh. it's one of these blood island. okay yeah the first skill during blood island increase blood gauge by 25 percent for 12 12 seconds so instead of it being 15 you add out on the extra 10 Make it quicker to get there. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Increases the boss damage. If you guys don't know, this is the boss damage symbol. Increases boss damage, overlapping up to two times. Okay. Also, during Power of Blood, which is this, is increased to 12 seconds. All attacks have 100% accuracy during power of blood nice so they don't miss at all that's gonna be really good because as long as she hits that's gonna make it perfectly fine for her so you don't need to build in accuracy but you will need to build crit if you're taking her into pvp just for this passive just because to reduce that attack speed and the activation is going to be perfect. Alright, ultimate enhance. When attacking enemies inflicted by Call of the Blood Sword, which is the second skill, reduce your enemy's armor by 22% and increase their damage received by 96%. Oh my god. You guys may not think this is a lot, but that's actually a pretty decent amount. Also, enemies inflicted with the third skill? Yeah, the third skill. Now receive 50% of their attack 
every time they attack. Wait, am I taking their attack? Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, that, yeah, they, they have it worded in a different way. So reflecting enemy skills is what now receiving their power. Oh, okay. Ah, so I should go back and forth and see if that's pretty right. Alright, pretty neat so far. Not bad. Not here bad. But fi receiving 50% of your damage is like hell <laughs> inside of PvP. That's going to be something else. I cannot wait for that. Alright, so next... Oh god, is going through like all the all these their own individual page. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, let me go here. Let me go ahead and scroll down. Alright, so next we have Erwin. Erwin is a dual wielder. Physical DPS double damage to one enemy. Okay. Let's see. So first skill removes one beneficial effect from an enemy and deals damage. Except for boss types, the enemy will be blown into the air for 12 seconds. Oh my god. And leave the battlefield. No! He's basically, he's basically like Atlas. How she was. <laughs> it means this guy hits you out of battle for 12 seconds. And if the rest of your teammates die and that ally is still out, he's not coming back. That's pretty much the end of the battle. You lost. This unit is going to be counted as dead for 12 seconds is basically what that is. Then he'll come back down into the battlefield. No. No. Not another character that does that. We don't need it. Especially inside of... Especially inside of the exalted, dude. Come on. Ah. Uh, I have to watch out for this fucking guy now. <laughs> And it's 12 second cooldown. That's that's gonna be insane. So boss type enemy receive bonus damage, and all attacks are critical. Oh damn! This cannot be removed. Jesus Christ! Seminate one beneficial effect from an enemy deals damage and piercing damage. Okay, nice. Except for boss enemies, those hit cannot use resurrection skills all right so no healer can actually revive those suffer a critical hit will also be stunned for four seconds on removable which is going to be pretty dangerous because stuns do become dangerous after a while especially if they cannot be removed those who are just normal stuns psh, don't even worry about those those are pretty much nothing you can just remove those easily Okay, so this one probably could be a typo too. Oh no, that that's actually right. So deal this amount of damage to boss types. Okay. Oh. Not only that, enemies cannot release their death passive or self revive. So basically Fuck Blaze Eater. <laughs> He's not gonna be able to do anything. So this is a complete counter to Blaze Eater. So PvP character, hands down, pretty much kills Helsing as well. So yeah, fuck her too, apparently. This guy is just basically fuck all the arena characters that come into the game. Probably fuck Ragnarok too. <laughs> like jeez, man. All right, third skill exterminates all beneficial buffs on the enemies and deals damage and piercing damage and consumes all sword debris dealing additional damage to all enemies okay so first passive so normal attack and all your skills will increase the debris gauge by seven when a gauge he reaches 100 it consumes all stacks and you gain 100 percent accuracy for 10 seconds also increasing attack speed for 50% and attack power for 200%. During this, he becomes immortal. Wait, what the fuck? That's his name? 
Um, okay, I guess that's a weird name. But anywho, becomes immortal and 80% of his HP is restored when the mortal is over. When, well, when immortality is over. When a normal attack or the other skills hit. I want to the debris gauge. Okay. Upon striking the enemy, apply one sword wound. Okay, what does that do? Reduces armor per wound. Stacks up to 20. Alright, so pretty much increasing their damage received. Alright, second passive. Reduces enemy attack speed by 1% and increases the damage they received by... Okay, I was confused at first. I was about to say, why, why just 1%? And increase the damage they receive by 45%. This effect increases by 1% every enhancement. So probably like, I want to say like 16, 15%, whichever one it is to get to ultimate or whatever above that. Alright. Third passive. Increases self boss damage and piercing damage when facing a boss type enemy. Additional damage to war boss Cerberus. Okay. Well, additional boss damage to world boss Cerberus. Alright, pretty neat. Pretty neat. Alright, max passive. Reduce all damage received by 30%. Remove all beneficial buffs from enemies around his target that was hit by the first skill. Increases their damage taken. For 12 seconds by 130% or 135%. This effect cannot be removed. Alright, so next is reduce damage by 20%. Okay, so he's basically coming to tank because he's receiving 50% less damage now. If you hit an enemy, you will receive an additional 9 seconds of non skill use. Okay, while the boss types will take. More physical damage and more melee damage for six seconds. But wait, you will receive an additional six seconds for non skill use. Let's see if this is worth any different. Now, you guys told me that. Yeah, you guys told me that this was kind of better translated. It's still kind of weirdly translated versus uh, this. It's shorter. But not as not as good as actually this, because <laughs> they actually say like received this amount of damage and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick with this and deal with their typos. I just wanted to try something new. That's pretty much it. But anywho, back to the actual patch notes. So Azaltids are finally getting their ultimate system, so everything's gonna go up. Passions unlock for that. So yeah, pretty neat. Character will receive ultimate enhance also, and all the skills will be ultimate enhanced. And now we're gonna get a new event for L and Arrow. So that's going to be pretty nice. And plus we get a golden pig accessory, which I'm guessing increases gold income. So that's going to be nice. So the pig accessory is 20. Both of the exalted's 400. If you want more. Transcended essence, that's going to be 50. Um, they're going to be triple S units for 150, which I wish they would just add in, you know, souls in there somewhere. But, you know, I guess fuck me, right? <laughs> uh, you can get gold for 200 and you can get tickets for 20. All right. Now rewards for. OK, so never mind. This is just coming back. Wait, why is it in the summer outfit? I'm guessing we're missing stuff here.
but hey, whatever. They look nice. <laughs> but yeah, the Marvel event is coming back, so that's pretty much just auto get dice. They come here and climb up the ladder, get your rewards. Basically, it. <laughs> Nothing special. But we do. Oh, we do get a lot of good rewards. So day one. We get five random souls, useless, because they're just gonna all be random. I mean, well, not completely useless. They're, they're nice to receive, but they're kinda useless versus the select what you want. 100 transcendent essence, five burning capsules. That's gonna be nice, because I'm pretty sure we all have just been all flying farming. <laughs> Alright, Soul Summons, 10. Rune Summon, 500. Okay, that's going to be great. And then there is the separate Emperor tickets. 150, 20, 5. Dresident of it since 3000. 10 of these, 10 of these. 150 and 100. Then we get our ultimate overlord. All right, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much all I wanted to go over. This is probably gonna be like pretty fun because, well, actually, probably not pretty fun because we gotta actually farm for these characters <laughs> versus like the um, what the fuck was it, sanctuary? Which everybody actually really enjoyed that, from what I hear. Versus like just drop farming, but drop farming is not half bad anymore since we have the you know offline farm now in Chandler Dungeon. So if you ever need to go on hands off mode, then yeah, that's perfect. Oh, yeah, I figured out why I was losing gold and haven't been really gaining much. Apparently, when the game reset, it set my stuff to 50% for some reason. I don't get why it set my stuff to 50%. It reset all my records is what it was, actually. It reset all my records and it put both of these on 50%, which kind of hindered me from getting all my loot. So pretty much it was like a 50-50 chance of me actually getting wins. So I went back and just completed it all. That's what the issue was. Like, what happened? This was 100% gauge, like, all the time. And I don't... I've never lost one inside of here. Also, not even with this team. Like, this team would destroy this, even if I was to change somebody out. And I never did. Somehow, it was 50 when I came here. That's the thing that puzzled me. What happened? <laughs> but, yeah. I figured that out. I'm back on the grind, but I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys on the next one. Till then, peace out. It's gonna get better real soon. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through. Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Cause what you got to lose